Sound is our true reality, our true being. Sound gives form. Sound is caused by anything that vibrates, and every vibration has a frequency and an amplitude. Everything is frequency. What's holding physical reality together is vibration. Sound is forming energy, forming matter. Frequency and vibration is all there is at every level. But we have distorted it. So there's a, a lack of harmony. The, the frequencies have gone out of tune. And this is, think of ourselves as a musical instrument. We will put ourselves back in tune, closer to the natural frequency. Sound can make or break or rearrange molecular structure. If you think about what this means, then you realize that you can basically rearrange the molecular structure of your body. I think the first thing to understand is that sound is not a wave, which is the general view. But in fact, in my discovery, I've shown that sound is spherical. And on the surface of the bubble of sound is a beautiful pattern. So if you're making a, a pleasant sound, you will have inherent beauty and structure. Uh, if you make uh, an angry sound, actually the pattern disrupts and you get a rather subjectively ugly pattern. Sound has uh, inherent form in it uh, and geometry in it. Sound will move uh, things like sand and like a podium powder and liquid into specific shapes relative to its frequency and amplitude and the tension in the membrane. Frequency is how fast something is vibrating. So things that are vibrating faster have a higher pitch to our ears, like the string on a violin. Things that are vibrating more slowly uh, will sound lower pitched to our ears, like the string on a double bass or a cello. Amplitude, however, is how strongly it's vibrating. In other words, how forceful is that vibration? And that translates to our ears as volume, whether it's a soft sound or a loud sound. The structure in sounds is very, very important to human cells. If we make harmonious sounds, there's a beautiful pattern that occurs on every cell in our bodies. Certain sounds create, obviously, certain patterns that have a highly beneficial effect on the cells themselves. This beautiful pattern that emerges on the surface of the cell uh, opens the ion channels and allows the cell to communicate. And very often in a sick person, the cells are kind of uh, shut down, they're in a spasm type state, and they're not, not doing what they should be doing if they were healthy cells. By playing certain sounds to cells that are uh, in this kind of spasm state, we can re-energize them, kind of supercharge them, and get them working to be healthy again and to obviously heal the person. People often ask me, well, what sort of conditions can be healed with sound? And I say, conceptually, anything can possibly be healed with sound. I think sound can heal our physical bodies, our emotional body, our intellectual body, our soul. I've seen so many breakthroughs where people had uh, hatred and pent up stuff. And, uh, and then I've seen stroke victims that, that their arm was all curled up and, and saw it relax and, and they could use it again and how that helped restore their life. I think people heal themselves and the sound is just a support because somewhere we lost the ability to generate our own sounds because of electricity or bad lighting or bad water or bad sex or bad thoughts or whatever. Um, we had the ability, well, it's my belief, that we had the ability at one time to generate our own healing and we forgot. A sound has been used for thousands of years by shamans and sound healers and the Egyptians as a healing modality. And I think it's one of the things that we've forgotten. Here we're talking about using sound as a frequency shifting tool, as a tool for entrainment. Changing the vibrations of that which is putting you out of balance or harmony and putting you into a state of sound health. When something is vibrating and making a sound, uh, and there is something else that shares that natural frequency, and it also wants to vibrate at that frequency, object A can get object B going. So in other words, uh, uh, your chest wants to vibrate at a certain rate, you hear a low note, and suddenly you feel it in your chest because your chest is reacting sympathetically, sympathetic vibration we call it, to the pitch that you're hearing. Or one tuning fork that is vibrating. You have another tuning fork that you don't even strike, 
you bring tuning fork A over to tuning fork B, kill tuning fork A, tuning fork B continues to vibrate because it was stimulated just by the vibration of the first tuning fork. You could think of people as being tuning forks. We've got these frequencies at which parts of us want to vibrate and things in our environment can set us going, just like one tuning fork can set off another tuning fork. It's bringing about wholeness through a process of vibration. So my object working with vocal sound is to get people to vibrate vowels and consonants in certain ways or mantras or even to get them to laugh. Yes, there is physical benefit because the body will relax. We see that. But ultimately, what people are looking for is great peace of mind, balance, wholeness. If I were to ask a question, what is probably the number one cause of a lot of the imbalances on the planet right now, we would all agree that it's stress. So if you could simply use music, sound, self-created sounds, to reduce stress, then you'd probably be alleviating a lot of the initial causes of uh, imbalances that might manifest on your body. We all emit information. We emit the vibrations. And people get it, but they don't, they don't know consciously. I mean, uh, but they get the information. So if you have a lot of information that is down, that is dark, that is under the level of consciousness. You don't know what you emit. You, maybe you emit terrible things, you know, that is in relation with what you have re been repressing. So if we resonate to unconscious stuff, we don't know what's, what's happening to us, you know, it's very dangerous. And when we are more self-conscious, we, we are more master of our life and, and of our health. I think of sound healing in terms of um, improving the relationship between our egos and our souls. I think music opens up the ego and then the soul has a bigger chance to come through and guide us in various ways. In the emotional body, there are places that are in the unconscious, really, that we feel stuck in. And being able to take sound and go into those places, it's almost like we can break up those stuck places and then bring in the flow of energy so that the person, for instance, if they're you know struggling with relationship issues or uh, just a myriad of, of emotional stresses, that once those stuck places are opened up, they then begin to move forward in their lives and begin to feel better about themselves. Our body is 70-80% um, crystalline structure, which is water, which entrains. And so any areas that maybe are out of balance sometimes, um, we'll look at those and we'll see how we can bring them into harmony. The bowls are sending out a harmonious frequency. And as that vibration goes into the body, the sacred geometry activates the areas in our life that maybe are not as harmonious and it lets us know to come into and train and train into the more harmonious frequencies. Our approach to sound healing is rooted in oriental medicine. It's where we started and an understanding of correspondences, sympathies, and uh, archetypes, myths. So we work with the frequencies of the earth, moon, sun, and planets, and we apply those frequencies directly to the acupressure points, trigger points, and points of pain in the body. We start by working physically on the body and then what I, we also like to bring sound into the etheric field as well as to bathe the body in sound. And so our whole approach to healing, while it starts with this 5,000 year old medicine, oriental medicine, also brings in a number of other sound healing tools beyond tuning forks. We work with Tibetan bowls laid on the body and under the body. We also work with planetary gongs. Everything in our system as I mentioned, is tuned to the frequencies of the Earth, Moon, Sun, and planets. And we also work with musical intervals. So for example, when we're working with the new moon fifth, it's the moon in its new phase from one new moon to the next, combined with the ohm fork. And that creates a fifth in music. And a fifth, as we know from music, is gently opening. So it has the archetypal quality of the moon, which is yin, of new things, moving things. And so I might therapeutically use it on the lung points to gently open up the lungs or the airways in someone who might be suffering from asthma. 
the tuning forks that we work with that we developed are accurate to the hundredth and they'll vibrate for 25 seconds and if they don't it becomes a diagnostic key so we were able to take these into a clinical environment into a western biomedical environment into hospitals into places where people were a little either timid or afraid of working with the needles the whole view of oriental medicine is that we as humanity stand between heaven and earth and we're all connected and Chang Tzu said heaven, earth and I are one. You know, everything has an inextricable unity and so we're always in this loop of, of, being, medi of being a mediator between those cosmic energies and the earth energies and the way that we mediate is through the energetic systems in our body which are called the meridians which carry this this energy or chi throughout, but we access those deeper le levels of chi through acupuncture points. Now these aren't just static um, points either. These are nonlinear, they're three-dimensional. You just don't touch it and that's where it is. It's functioning deep to send energy and information deep in the body and the point lives also up above the body. So they're kind of vortexes of energy and we're we're using the sound to actually open up that pathway uh, so that it registers and has global effect on the body. Sometimes we may use a point that's on the hand to affect something in the head because the meridians flow throughout and they all interconnect, interconnectivity and the holism. So that by working on one thing, we may affect something else that we didn't even realize was there. It may not be the primary problem somebody came in, but it's part of the global ecology of the system, it's beautiful. Well, I also think that when you understand that the body is 70% water, and sound travels four times faster in water, so not only are we accessing this primordial chi in the body through the meridians, but we're also accessing the waterways. And with sound traveling four times faster in water, the human body is really a perfect resonator for sound. And so when you bring the concept of oriental medicine and the, the points as gateways into this understanding of human physiology and how sound flows through the human body, you begin to understand how you can affect such great change when you apply sound to the physical body. We have all of these nerve fibers, uh, about 144,000 miles of nerve fibers. So if we took somebody and took everything away but their nerve fibers, we could still recognize them as the individual that they are. And on those nerve fibers is a frequency. And it runs all over your body in every part of your body, except people who have dead nerves, like on the ends of their hands. But the brain is the central processing unit of all of that information. So these sounds are in every cell of your body. And we just found a way to have your voice give us that information. And we found out that we could feed you that sound back that you had missing or that was too big or had too much of or too little of. We could feed it back and your brain would respond. And it was a matter of us finding the right way to provide that sound to you. So there's specific formulas that we use to get your brain to respond. And we also found out that we couldn't use very high sounds because your brain frequencies are zero to 64 cycles per second. So we found out we had to deliver the sound to your brain in a way that your brain could understand it. And your brain is math. Language is math. The computer program that we created changes your voice from sound to math. And so we have a common language now between the brain and the voice. And we just had to find a way for them to talk to each other and we learned to do that just through 30 years of trial and error. There's a lot of people who just think this is the placebo effect and I don't care. If that's the part of your brain that makes you well, let's go for it. When we have people who have really bad back pain and we take it, that back pain away, they don't care how we did it. And I don't care if it's all in their head because that's what we're going for anyway, their brain to change those frequencies. We have everything to support this from very anecdotal information about some of these headaches being taken away to very double-blind scientific uh, lab tested information to show that this works. 
Um, but things like regeneration of nerves where they can test the nerves and whether it's conducting a frequency and then a few months later they conduct these same tests and there's a signal, a good signal running on those nerves and the person isn't paralyzed anymore and they can feel. That's, that's genuine. But I don't mind if it's a placebo effect uh, just as long as the person got well and we can repeat it. And we can repeat it. I mean, there's so many epidemics going on and we could see them before they happen and there's so much lack of support in our medical system especially here in the u.s we spend a tremendous amount of our gross national product on health and it's going to really change the health care system what we need to be concerned about in the future is what are we going to do when we all get well we invented a machine called cymoscope which allows us to actually image sounds. For the first time, we can make a sound, our own vocal sound, into a microphone, for example, and that will appear on the membrane of the cymoscope. We are collaborating uh, right now with a company called Cymotherapy International, based in Spokane, and this company make a, a wonderful machine called a Cyma 1000. So th this machine actually puts out healing sounds these sounds can be used via an applicator to apply to different parts of the body wherever you, you need um, an input of sound to recharge or supercharge the cells. We have the only instrument currently available in the world that can image the very sounds that the cymotherapy machine is putting out. So my belief is that by, by actually uh, using these images in the form of a mandala, where you, you, it's a kind of meditation, you, you view the healing sounds in this image form that um, with cymotherapy imaged on, as a mandala, that when we view that mandala, we are effectively receiving the information into our bodies through the, through the vision as well as through this other medium of literally a sound into the body. And I believe, um, only intuitively at this stage, I have no evidence to support this, but intuitively I believe that will actually assist the healing process. When people can see that their own voice can move the sand into a particular shape, that music can move sand into a particular shape, that um, an oscillator, or an individual frequency can vibrate water into a geometric pattern, it opens their minds to realize that uh, sound in general, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in a musical situation, whether it's in our conversation, whether it's in healing, whether it's outside in the environment, the sound actually does move things around and the sound does affect people. It's important to remember that when we're dealing with sound and music and art, that we're not dealing with a prescriptive commodity like we are with certain kinds of medication. We are using the energy, the rhythm, the harmony, the melody, the inspiration to help bring alignment to many other people. Whether it is stress reduction or whether it is geriatric work or whether we're working with children with ADHD, everyone has a little bit different resonance in the way they listen and the way they take in music. Music activates the brain on multiple levels simultaneously. And that's one of its great mysteries, because even some of the great neuroscientists are unable to detect why music has different kinds of responses. It's not just a matter of play things so that the musical area of the brain responses, but in some people, the impact of rhythm has a dynamic physiological effect that helps them walk if they've had a stroke. At other times, the harmonic elements of music give them an enormous power to release psychologically. So in a more psychotherapeutic context, there is an emotional connection that may have been dissociative in, in a previous state. But it's not so much take a piece of music and go to bed and wake up well in the morning. It's how do we change our listening? How do we attune ourselves? And how do we learn the nutritional components of sound that can be very, very affective and simultaneously effective. Some people will respond well to sound, some people will respond well to light, some people will respond well to aromatherapy, some people will respond well to much better to pharmaceuticals. A lot of it, if you like, is their belief system. So with all those things, why should someone 
uh, go to sound as a therapeutic uh, tool? Well, for the most part, it's non-invasive. Then no surgery is required. For the most part, it doesn't really have uh, side effects as opposed to a lot of the pharmaceuticals today, which you take X, but you may experience Y, Z, and all sorts of other things that almost seem as horrible as whatever condition you have. Uh, so, you know, with, with that in mind, uh, sound seems to be a very safe and very, very powerful tool. Because once again, if you can rearrange molecular structure, you can do anything. of love are burning strong fires of love the fires of love are burning yeah the fires of love the fires of love are burning strong we each have a song to sing we each have a rhyme to ring in the everlasting sounds of creation we each have a note to play we each have our line to lay down in the symphony of conscious expansion we are the music of the spheres we are the life of all these years we can't relinquish fears and forge on through the dark let your music be your light let love's rhythm be your sight as it ignites in you the fires from which you spark the fires of love well, the fires of love are burning yeah the fires of love the fires of love are burning strong of love are burning strong fires of love the fires of love are burning yeah the fires of love the fires of love are burning strong we each have a song to sing we each have a rhyme to ring in the everlasting sounds of creation we each have a note to play we each have our line to lay down in the symphony of conscious expansion we are the music of the spheres we are the life of all these years we can't relinquish fears and forge on through the dark let your music be your light let love's rhythm be your sight as it ignites in you the fires from which you spark